I became a Christian when I was a little girl. My mum and dad took me to church with my two brothers, Richard and Simon. I remember enjoying going to Sunday school. As years passed, I started going to Limington Junior School with my brother Richard. I didn't enjoy school much as I was always very naughty and couldn't learn because of my dyslexia. My brother Richard went on to Preston School and they sent me to Oak Lodge. I didn't want to go but I had no choice. I didn't learn at all because I was bullied all the way through school. I tried to fit in but no one liked me and I didn't know why. I remember on one occasion I was playing squash with someone at school. I used to enjoy PE, especially running. Next minute two boys came and shut the door and I was sexually assaulted. After that I felt so ashamed of myself I could not do anything because I was so scared. I didn't tell my parents because I was scared of the boys doing it again. Every day I was bullied. It got worse. My dad was always at the school trying to sort it out, but got nowhere. Eventually, I didn't go to school because it got so bad at dinner time at school. I liked my food, but the school kids would pour water in my food. Life at home was not very good. Mum and Dad were always arguing about money and other stuff. Eventually, they split up and went their separate ways. So I was always out drinking with my home friends and mixing with boys, not good, as one occasion I got raped. And that really messed me up as my dad was not here for me, so I decided to end my life by taking lots of paracetamol. My mum found me and called an ambulance. Eventually I got over it and moved on and started working in Karen's pet market. I love working there because I love animals, but the memories started to resurface and I ended up drinking again and quitting my job. And going out in pubs and drinking and flirting with men and doing things I shouldn't. I was 17 years old when I met Paul Brad's dad and he was 35 years old. Too old for me but I didn't care as I seen him as a father figure. As my dad wasn't around. I didn't think it would turn into a relationship, but it did. Like at home, so bad, me and mum was always arguing all the time, but my relationship with Paul was going so good, he treated me like a princess. In the end, I decided to move up to the Midlands, and that's when I found out I was 14 weeks pregnant with my son Brad. I never told my mum or dad where I was going, I didn't think they cared. So I decided to form a relationship with Paul's mum, Elsie. Eventually I gave birth to my son, who I named Brad. Everything was going good, and eventually I fell pregnant with my second child, Charlotte, and then my third child, Maria. But things decided to take n turn nasty, as Paul was always drinking, and when we was drinking, he was hitting me. Everything Eventually, we moved back down south to be near my family where my mum and I got very close. Paul was still drinking very heavily. He was hitting me more and more, so I left him and went to stay with my mum. But I only had Charlotte and Maria as he had Brad and wouldn't let Brad go. I was only at mum's for a short period of time I felt incomplete without my son Brad as he would not let go of him. And when I run up to speak to my son on the phone, Brad would say things like, I don't love you anymore, Mum, because you're not here with me and Dad. So I ended up going back to Paul and I know now that he was making Brad say it so that I would go back to him. I, didn't, I decided I didn't want any more children, but Paul was not having it as he wanted more. So I ended up having more, and that's when I had my Natalie and Emma. We eventually settled down in Stone, in Staffordshire Stone in the Midlands. I didn't want, he didn't want to move, I didn't want to move up north, but I had no choice as Paul had his way. 
Life become very difficult for me as I find it very hard to cope with all my kids. As I had no access to money, as Paul would not let me have any because he was in control, he would not let me go out with my children to take them to the park. He would lock me in and he would go out drinking all day and night. He would not let me have the child benefit book as I was entitled to it. Life was getting very hard for me. He was getting very obsessed with food and other things. He told me if I touched any food in the day to feed my children, he would hurt me. But that, but we were hungry, so I had no choice but to feed us all. And when he eventually came home, he would get very angry with me and hurt me bad because I fed myself and my children. I didn't dare say anything back to him as the beatings would get worse. One time he was arguing with me about our children's toys being downstairs in the lounge instead of being in their bedrooms and I answered him back and he tried to bite my fingers off. I was in pain for days, wasn't allowed to go to the doctor to seek medical treatment. He would go out all day and night and eventually come home, would not let me sleep and I and if I was asleep, he would pour water over me or urinate all over me. All I wanted to do was die, but I couldn't because I didn't want to leave my kids behind. Life was very hard. I just wanted him to leave me alone and go off with another woman or die. His mum was nasty to me. She would make up things by saying I was doing things like when he would eventually go out for the day. He would eventually go out for the day. She would say things like I was looking at other men when I wasn't. I was too scared to do anything. Paul would then start beating me again all over my body and my kids' school would start to recognise my bruising all over me and my face. Social services got involved and eventually took my children off us. I wanted to tell them the truth, what he was doing to me and our children, but he said if I'd said anything, he would kill me. And that to me was a threat and I took that seriously. I was too scared, so I said nothing, but things were very hard without them. I would cry all the time and he didn't like that and would hurt me because of it but he didn't care because he was always drinking and off with other women all the time and having and having me at, and leaving me at home with his mum and his stepdad they moved in for a while to help out i became very depressed and suicidal about my babies that i started to drink again life i did it in the past and all i wanted to do was die we eventually jumped through hopes to get my babies back home, but it didn't happen because he would not go to rehab and sort his drinking out. And they wanted to put me in a mother and baby placement while he was in rehab. If only I wasn't married to him, it would have happened. He'd, he now... What he, was, he knew what he was doing when he married me because he wanted more control. I found out why we moved so many times, altogether 23 homes. It's because he was a risk to children, because he was violent to his first wife, who he put her in hospital for beating her and breaking her jaw. In years of abuse, they had a child together called Michael, who I raised with my own children. Eventually my kids got adopted. That was the hardest thing I went through in my life, saying goodbye to my kids. It didn't, he didn't care. Freedom for him. He eventually moved on and got married again and had more kids with someone else. And they are in care system. Life, life mine has never changed. Still hurting women like he, his new wife who stayed with him without her boys who had with he had with who she had with as soon as I lost my kids I was off. Life was not the same 
after that. I was living in Cornwall at the time. I just had my last child with him before he got with his third wife. I know I shouldn't have got back with him after losing my other children, but I did because I was damaged goods. And he told me before that no one wanted, would have me or love me like he did because I got back with him, Russell was taken off me and put up for adoption, like my other children. I separated from him for good this time. I never went back. I started a new life in Cornwall at the time. I was so messed up that I was doing drugs and self-harming all the time. My favourite was ecstasy pills. I loved taking them because I could escape reality and not think about what I went through with Paul and losing my kids. I was taking drugs all the time and going out and going from one relationship to another. I didn't care about what I was doing to my body or my mind. All I wanted to do was get high. I didn't care anymore, but it was making me worse as I didn't eat at all. I was getting very thin and my mental health was getting worse. The council in Cornwall gave me a flat of my own, but I was still doing lots of drugs when I met someone who I thought loved me, but he didn't. He used me like my husband Paul did. We stayed together for a while. His name was Mike. I started to get involved in a church and I started to come off drugs. Things were looking up for me. I met a lovely lady called Angie and her husband David who loved God very much. I eventually got more involved in the church and I ended up going on missionary work to the Ukraine which was the best experience of my life. But I came away from the church and old memories started to resurface again. I did pray, but I didn't believe it would work. And then I started doing drugs again and started mixing with bad people. And, Mike's, and me and Mike split up. Eventually, I was in contact with my mum and she decided to come and visit me. She saw me and I was very ill on drugs. She knew she had to get me to come back home or she was afraid she would get a call saying I was dead. I eventually moved down to be with my family. Mum was very happy, but I was still doing drugs and drinking heavily. I was on and off going to church. I could not settle with a good church. I was on and off with relationship. I did find love again. His name was Jamie, but he ended up taking heroin and coming very ill. So that was the end of that. Life has been a roller coaster for me, up and down. Me and Mum moved together to New Milton to start a new life. I like New Milton. Living together has been difficult and hard. We eventually joined New Milton Baptist Church. I did go to some churches when I came back to Hampshire, but I didn't like them like I like this church. I've always been a born again Christian. It was me who turned my back on God, not the other way around. I've been through a lot of rubbish in my life, like I got diagnosed with depression, social anxiety, personality disorder and slight schizophrenia, all because of Paul and what I went through when I was a child. I could go on, but I've been talking for the rest of my life. Over the years, I've smoked a lot of cannabis, thinking it would take away my anxiety and depression but it didn't work and I know that now, that's why I quit months ago. And I feel a lot better for it, a lot closer to God. I now live in my own place with my two dogs, Ronnie and Rosie. I love my dogs. I prayed to God that my kids would come back to me. Eventually Brad came back and is now in America preaching and his wife and I have two grandchildren whose names are Leah and Jacob. I would love very much and I am very proud of my son and he has given and I hope given me. I do have other children and I do hope that they will come back to me as I pray for that. I will continue to walk with God for the rest of my life even though life has, take, has been very hard.